welcome all of us uh, who are present physically in this hall, the Pauline Dixie Lecture Theatre of the University of Ibadan, College of Medicine, University of Ibadan. And for people joining us online as well, we welcome you to this program. We want to start the program this evening with an open prayer said by Professor Uluwatosin. Professor Uluwatosin, sir. Can we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this special location. You gave and you have taken away. And that is why we have come to celebrate you in him. We appreciate you for everything and every good thing you did in this life that we are witness to, to some extent. Blessed be your name, Father, especially at this time. We invite you to come and to bless us as we lift up your name in glory. To you be praised forever and ever. Let your spirit come also to bless us. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Thank you, sir. Next, I will call on the head of the Department of Surgery, Professor Esso Gunade, to read citation of our great grand teacher, uh, Professor Isaac Adetayo Grillo. Professor Gunade, sir. Vice Chancellor, uh, Provost College of Medicine, our teachers, Professor Akande, uh, Professor Emeritus Akande, Professor Ajayi, our senior colleagues, and the family of Professor Grillo, and all other. Uh, invited guest. I stand here to read the citation of Professor Isaac Aditayo Grillo. Professor Isaac Aditayo Grillo was born on January 15, 1931, in Lagos. He had both his elementary and secondary school education at Baptist Academy, Lagos. He autobiography recorded that he excelled brilliantly while in the school. He did the United States of America by divine providence. He attended McPherson College, McPherson, Kansas, USA from 1952 to 1955, University of Kansas, USA, 1955 to 1956, where he backed Bachelor of Science Biology. In the college, he distinguished himself on campus as a student of great ability by taking each semester more hours than normal, taking enough hours for not only a major in chemistry, but it's not hours for a major in biology. Professor Grillo went on to medical school at the University of Kansas, getting his MD in 1960. He continued in medicine by obtaining his four-year degree in surgery at the Homer G. Phillips Hospital at St. Louis, Missouri in 1965. Professor Grillo asked his residency training in cardiothoracic surgery in Olive View Hospital, Olive View, California in 1966, Highland General Hospital, Oakland, California in 1970, and Veterans Administration Hospital, Livermore, California, in 1967. He was both satisfied by both the American Board of General Surgery and the American Board of Thoracic Surgery. He was appointed lecturer in the Department of Surgery on November 2, 1968. 
He rose through the ranks and was promoted professor of surgery on October 1st, 1978. Professor Grillo was awarded foreign student scholarship in Manfasin College and in Southfield University of Kansas. The Japanese government granted him a cooperative agency fellowship in clinical oncology and flexible bunko for in 1971. He was a Fulbright AIDS scholar, United States Government Fellowship in Cardiovascular Surgery and Pacific Medical Center, San Francisco, California in 1977. Professor Grillo was also a fellow of National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria and fellow of West African College of Surgeons. McPherson College's alma mater honored him with the award of Honorary Doctor of Science degree on October 9, 1987 in USA. He was an external examiner to most medical schools of the first generation universities in Nigeria. He was head of the Department of Surgery from 1985 to 1988. During his headship, he improved on the curricula for the teaching of students and was instrumental in increasing the number of resident doctors in surgery. He was warm to interact with, with a father to the students and residents while a friend to his colleague. Professor Aideta Ogrilo published widely. He contributed six chapters in various texts, including Companion to Surgery in Africa and had 80 journals in various medical journals in America. Professor Aideta Ogrilo was an assistant cardiothoracic surgeon. He pioneered open heart surgery in the University College Hospital in the 80s. He was happily married and survived by many children. He died in the early hours of Monday, April 4, 2022. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you, sir, our head of department of surgery, Professor S. O. Gunade. Next, we listen to the music interlude from Dr. Yudo Dayo. start with the first set of tributes, and the first one will be delivered on behalf of the Vice Chancellor of the University of Ibadan, and on behalf of the Provost College of Medicine, my Deputy Provost, Professor F. A. Adeniyi. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, 
Um, this evening, I stand here to represent the provost of the College of Medicine, University of Ibarra, Professor Olainka Umibadu, who is um, unavoidably absent because she is out of the country right now. As a, as a matter of fact, she is actually in transit. She probably would have joined and to make uh, the speech online because she called, uh, not, uh, we talked long, long ago, and then based on the instructions she gave me a few days ago that in case she's unable to make this event, I should speak on her behalf. And that is why I am here. I represent, I, uh, I greet you all heartily, all our teachers, or maybe if I speak, I say all our grand teachers who are in this auditorium this evening, I recognize everyone, um, especially the uh, foundation provost of the College of Medicine, and um, who also doubled as the chief medical director of the University College Hospital, and also a former president of Ibadan College of Medicine, Alumni Association, Emeritus Professor Oluwalia Konde. Um, I recognize all um, past provosts who I can see some of them uh, online and um, uh, right here in the auditorium, Professor Temitaya Shekumbi and um, former chief medical directors who are here. I can see our very own father, uh, Professor Lajide Ajayi and uh, I can see Professor Temitope Alunge and every other person in this hall. And I, of course, I recognize the Chief Medical Director of University College Hospital, Professor Jesse Abiodun Otebayo, who is ably represented this evening by um, a Deputy Chairman Medical Advisory Committee, Dr. Taiwo Sheinka. Uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, family of our very revered um, late Professor Isaac Aditayo, Grillo, who we are all here um, to uh, pay tribute to, I greet all of you. And I will just go ahead to read um, the speech of um, the provost. Of course, I also recognize most sincerely the head of department of um, surgery, because um, Professor Grillo was in the department of surgery, uh, Professor Gunlade, and all faculty members the Department of Surgery, I recognize everyone. Um, I stand before you this evening on behalf of um, the staff, students, and indeed all alumni of the College of Medicine, University of Ibadan, who are spread across the globe and um, doing what they know how to do best because of some of the efforts of people like Professor um, Isaac Grillo. No doubt that many of our staff and alumni benefited from the wealth of knowledge of the man we are all gathered here this evening, not to mourn, but to celebrate, Professor Isaac Aditayo Grillo. Indeed, Professor Grillo can be described using diverse appellations, all depending on the relationship that each one of us had with him. From the point of view of the College of Medicine Administration, we can aptly describe Professor Grillo as a teacher of teachers, a mentor of mentors, and a field marshal in the field of surgery. He was a great cardiothoracic surgeon who pioneered open heart surgeries in the College of Medicine uh, and, of course, in the University College Hospital in the 1980s. He served meritoriously as the head of surgery uh, between 1985 and 1988. And um, he did very well based on the records we have. Uh, his tenure was um, quite uh, remarkable. I have very fond memories. That is the provost speaking now. Um, I have very fond memories of sitting in his class during surgery two postings as he took us 
through several radiological images depicting various conditions. He was by all standards a great teacher and scholar. Um, several other students who had the rare privilege of training under this seasoned academic and clinician equally had fond memories about him. And I will just um, go ahead to speak about two of them. In the words of Major General Dr. Shino Ogumbi, retired MNI, a member of the 1982 class, late Professor Isaac Grillo was an artistic cardiothoracic surgeon and a great teacher who simplified the art and science of cardiothoracic surgery to his students with an air spraying images and analogies. His legacies live on after him. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Amen. Also, Dr. Abraham Ario of the class of 1988, who is also the incoming president of the Ibadan College of Medicine Alumni Association, North America branch, wrote, and I quote, in 1985, when we were just new to UCH, we watched his word rounds as he moved along the corridor. His rounds with his colleagues, professors Adipo, Primo, and Oshinawa were special. We called them the Lions Club, and we used to feel sorry for their interns. I learned later what a privilege it was to be his intern. He showed discipline and love. He inspired us to be cardiovascular specialists. This is the passing of a giant. May the good Lord rest his soul in everlasting peace. There are several other alumni of the College of Medicine University of Ibadan who have spoken so highly of Professor Grillo and we have received several of those tributes uh, in honor of Professor Grillo. But for uh, the sake of time, I will just stop at that uh, two uh, citations. To the immediate and extended family of Professor Grillo, the Department of Surgery, and indeed all his professional colleagues and mentees across the globe, I come straight with you all as we pray for the repose of the soul of our great teacher, mentor, and benefactor, Professor Isaac Aditoyo Grillo. May his dear soul rest in perfect peace. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Provost. College of Medicine. Uh, next, um, we are going to call on the Foundation Provost of the College of Medicine, University of Ibadan. And then, he was also the Chief Medical Director of the UCH Ibadan at, at the same time. That is Professor Emeritus Oluwalia Kondesa. family of our dear colleague, Professor Isaac Grillo, the distinguished past chief medical directors here present, Professor Olajide Ajayi, Professor Timitayo. Uh, sorry, Alunga. The provost, past provost, Professor Shokumbi. Let me rest on this existing protocol. It's an emotional evening. 
tribute of tributes for a distinguished, very distinguished cardiothoracic surgeon who has departed at the age of 91. I remember Professor Grillo very well. He was a formidable surgeon. Very, very active, very dynamic. In those days, I don't know what happens now, but I know that the surgeons usually start operation by 7.30 in the morning. He, along with many others, made sure that this continued. By 7 o'clock in the morning, you will see the cars of the consultants, particularly the surgeons, already parked. Because by 7.30, they have to be in the theater to start the operation. 7.30 is not the time that they start coming. No, they are there already by 7.30. They are ready to, to operate at 7.30. He was such a dedicated surgeon. Not only did he work here, he also did spells of work at Obomosho, the Baptist hospital there, where he made sure that some of the students rotated through Obomosho. There was this outside posting that we had for students. He would make sure that he goes with his resident doctors at weekends. And by Monday morning, he was back here in the to again operate. We can go on and on and on about him. So many things have been written about him, and so many more will be written about him. But the history of this College of Medicine and the University College Hospital will not be complete without reference to Professor Isaac Adetayo Grillo. He was such a wonderful surgeon, such a wonderful teacher. Teacher of teachers, a mentor of mentors. He mentored so many people. And his record will continue here and will outlast him. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Thank you, sir. Professor Emeritus Olu Oliakonde, the Foundation Provost of the College of Medicine and the past chief medical director of the Rice College Hospital Ibadan. Next on the list of tributes is uh, that to be given by the current chief medical director of UCH Ibadan, Professor Jesse Otegbayo, but is unavoidably absent and has sent Dr. Taiwo Shoyinka to do that on his behalf. Dr. Shoyinka. Grandfathers of the profession, Professor Oduwali, Emeritus Professor Oduwali Akande, Professor Olajide Ajayi, our elders, former provosts, former CMDs, our teachers, the current provost of the College of Medicine, Professor Olanyi Kaomibodo, who is ably represented by the deputy provost of the College of Medicine teachers and colleagues, the, f the family of the late Professor Isaac Adeutayo Grillo, and friends of our late Professor Agriti Hall. I'm here representing the Chief Medical Director of the University College Hospital Ibadan, who would have loved to be here, but asked to be away out of town on some official duties. So I'm here representing him, and I bring greetings from him. Um, I personally didn't meet Professor Grillo as a lecturer and surgeon in UCH, but I was privileged to know him at the Orita Mefa Baptist Church where I worship. And he um, was a violin player who religiously played the violin um, at the choir stand. It was quite outstanding. And um, with that, I got to know him and it was such a great privilege. So I here to, I'm here to read a preview 
to Professor Isaac Aditaya Grillo by the Chief Medical Director, University College Hospital, Ibadan, Professor J.C. Abiodun Otegbayo. To teach is to touch a life forever. And Professor Grillo was indeed an iconic lecturer. It is with a heart of gratitude that I write this tribute to an iconic professor of cardiothoracic surgery, Professor Isaac Aditayo Grillo, who died on the early hours of Monday, the 4th of April, 2022. Professor Isaac Aditayo Grillo was born in the Lafayette Quarters, Lagos Island, Lagos, on January 15, 1931. Professor Grillo obtained his MD from Kansas University in 1960. From 1965 through 1966, late Professor Grillo trained in cardiothoracic surgery. He later moved to California and became one of the first thoracic surgeons at Island Hospital, Oakland. Professor Grillo took and passed in his first attempt the general surgery board exams in 1966 and the thoracic surgery board exams in 1967, showing how outstanding it was. From 1967 to 1968, Professor Grillo worked as a physician at the San Leandro Tuberculosis Hospital while teaching thoracic surgery to residents at Island Hospital. Though he studied abroad, his love for his country, Nigeria, made him bring home his vast knowledge in 1968, and UCH is extremely glad and fortunate to have out such an erudite professor. For approximately 20 years, from 1968 to 1988, he was successively a lecturer, professor, and head of the Department of Surgery at the Nigeria's premier medical school in Ibadan, Nigeria. During this time, he was the only thoracic surgeon in Nigeria. Professor Z Grillo was a man who stood out with his teachings and outstanding surgeries in the cardiothoracic arm of the surgery department, University College Hospital, Libado. Professor Isaac Grillo led a group of exclusively indigenous Nigerian cardiothoracic surgeons, anesthesiologists, pump technicians, and theater nurses in the first open heart surgery in Nigeria which took place in University College Hospital Ibadan without the assistance or presence of a foreign medical personnel. UCH, thank you. UCH trained these team members in the United States and ensured that they were proficient before embarking on this innovative procedure. My most vivid memory of this wonderful human being as scholar was in 1988 when he was the head of surgery at University of Ibadan. His kind, caring demeanor and leadership were unparalleled in all my school experience. He was a true mentor and was loved by all. I had her with his loved ones and admonish all to strive to be the best they can be at any point in life. May the gentle soul of Professor Aditya Grillo continue to rest peacefully in the bosom of his maker. Amen. That's by Professor Abiodun Otegbayo, the Chief Medical Director, University College Hospital, Ibadan. Thank you. So the next batch of tributes will come from the Department of Surgery. And to start, that is uh, Professor M.T. Shokumbi, who will tell us about what he knows about uh, Professor Grillo. The family of um, our late teacher and mentor, uh, um, the leadership hopefully. of the University of Ibadan, mm -hmm. the, the leadership of the College of Medicine, leadership of the University College Hospital, 
my um, teachers and mentors in the audience, um, Professor Ajay, Professor Akonde, my colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Um, tributes of this nature can have a series of different emotional connotations depending on the age, nature, and other features of the deceased. For Professor Grillo, who left for the great beyond at the age of 91. After a few days of mourning, I think most people in this room, including the family, have reasons to rejoice. Uh, not only did he live to a ripe old age of 91, he also has um, an incredible legacy, a lot of which has been spoken about this evening. One of the benefits of this kind of gathering, especially for people of Professor Grillo's stature, is to connect the past with the future. I'm sure there are people in this room who never met Professor Grillo, and there are probably people in this room who also didn't hear about him until he passed on. Um, this just reminds me of um, what would happen in a village square if an elderly person with comparable stature in the village to Professor Grillo passes on. I'm sure there will be celebrations, days and days and days of celebrations to recount the purposeful life that he has lived. And so I join all the members of this community in thanking the family of Professor Grillo for giving us an opportunity to be part of this celebration. The formal write-ups and, um, and speeches will be made by the officials, but permit me to speak not just on behalf of myself, but also on behalf of um, the members of the Division of Neurological Surgery of some important and uh, impactful contributions of Professor Grillo to our lives. But let me start by saying that as a student, I first found Professor Grillo, um, I don't know what the correct word is, something you expect and then you meet something different. When I first walked into his wardrobe, he approached as a giant, as a physical giant. I'm sure those of you who knew him will attest to that. But what shocked me, what surprised me, was his soft and mellifluous voice, his kindness, and his natural tendency to just make students feel very easy. I recall with great clarity, as I speak now, a ward round in the old accident and emergency room where we had a patient with hemoptysis, massive hemoptysis. And Professor Grillo said, there are only three causes of massive hemoptysis, and don't forget it, all of you. One is bronchiectasis, the other is pulmonary tuberculosis, and the third one is lung cancer. And I remember, in fact, I checked up on Google a few minutes ago, and those three causes have remained the same. Those small things coming from a distinguished teacher, simplified and distilled in a very easy way, are the memories that we all take away from the people who have mentored us. Of course, the mentor mentorship at student level continued when Professor Grillo came to Bumashaw uh, occasionally to relieve uh, surgeons there. I was a house officer at Baptist Hospital of Bumashaw then. And uh, we continued to benefit from his expertise and fatherly nature. And then came 1987. Uh, when I was being considered for appointment as a consultant neurosurgeon at the hospital. And one of those who made a great difference to the end of the outcome of that process is seated right in front of us here, that's Professor Ajay, was a complicated process. Um, the idea of somebody from another department being a consultant in a university hospital department was almost non-existent. Um, I had 
return home hoping to start work as a neurosurgeon, but there were some little administrative hitches, the most important of which was the fact that there was no position in the University Department of Surgery. Of course, when I left for training, I, was, I left as a member of the Department of Anatomy on staff development. So it was easy to actually quickly return to the department and the process of trying to get a staff of anatomy to be a consultant in, in surgery uh, was on in earnest. But I found Professor Grillo, who was then the head of surgery. I found him um, extremely open-minded and willing to consider all different possibilities. And of course, between him, Professor Ajay, Professor Shintoku, Professor Desalu, and of course, my boss, Professor Adeloye, who wasn't the head of the department then, but who, as most people in this room know, was a very close friend of Professor Adeloye. Um, my entry into the Department of Surgery as a consultant eventually came to be. So I joined the Department of Surgery towards the tail end of Professor Grillo's career. And I'm approaching the tail end of my career now, so you can see the gap. And that there's a huge generational um, interval between the man we're celebrating today and people like me and others who are talking about him. And hopefully it gives um, people in this audience who are younger than us an opportunity to see that institutions just don't happen. And the evolution and consolidation take people who are committed to it and who also think of the future rather than their own presence to make institutions great. And so, um, of course, that was a period of um, great economic turbulence in this country when a lot of people were going in the other direction and uh, a few of us who left Nigeria when things were really good uh, were coming back home. And I will never forget, um, after I was appointed consultant, he took me to his office, which is um, where Professor Gunladi's Department of Surgery office is now. Um, and he said to me, this uh, wooden cabinet and this chair are my presents to you for your small office, which uh, had no window to the outside world. Uh, but then the ACs were working, so it wasn't such a bad thing. And the lights were more regular, even though we were having failures even way back then. So he said, uh, I would um, pass this to you, even though your office is small, as my present to you for being mad enough to be coming in this direction when everybody's going in the other direction. Those were his words to me. And I said, well, I don't know what to make of what you've just said, but I'm very grateful for these pieces of furniture that you've just given me. Um, one of the pieces of furniture I later passed to Femi Afolabi, who is, uh, <laughs> who is right here. And everybody, the, every time I walk into his room, I remember Professor Grillo uh, for his kindness. Now, we have reasons to be grateful to him. I, um, he, he, he really actually treated me like a son. Uh, I was the youngest consultant at the time I was appointed, yes. Uh, I, I was the only one appointed at that time, so it wasn't that two or three of us, a few came later. And it was my duty to go to um, the premier junction to procure refreshments for the Thursday Department of Surgery meetings. So I needed to get back to UCH from UI, where I usually spend the mornings, um, to be able to head out and buy either Akara or Momoi, either of the two, but mostly Akara, um, before four o'clock. And I had a small yellow Honda Civic that was very fuel efficient, so it wasn't a problem coming this way and then going back. And I also took minutes occasionally. So the process of asking the newest consultant to write minutes for our meetings didn't start yesterday for the benefit of Dr. Bito. In case you thought you were being oppressed, you are not being oppressed. That's the tradition in the department. Um, uh, 
Of course, who else would have written the minutes? They were big boys, very big boys in the department then. I mean, Professor Ajayi at different times, CMAC, uh, then Provost and CMD of uh, uh, Shagamu then came back as Chief Medical Director. You're not going to ask, or were you going to ask Professor Adebo to write minutes? Or, or So it was a very um, enjoyable responsibility that Professor Grillo uh, allowed me to show that. It also, because when you write the minutes and you try and distill them, gave you a very good understanding of the nature of the departments. Uh, so that was fantastic. And of course, after that, uh, the, there was a bit of attrition in the staffing of the Division of Neurosurgery uh, with my late bosses having to leave. And um, we're grateful that uh, it was possible to now contribute building on the shoulders of those giants uh, to increasing the capacity in neurosurgery that we have today. So, um, Professor Malomo, of course, knew. Well, I think Professor Grillo left shortly after Professor Malomo joined us. Uh, but uh, Professor Adeolu, Professor Adele, uh, Dr. Balogo, and uh, Dr. Badejo, they probably uh, don't know this story. But now you know that one gentle giant who was uh, a multi talented man, a violinist, and so many other talents, he didn't care about politics, about university politics. Um, has contributed immensely to what neurosurgery is today. Um, again, I joined the authors in uh, thanking the family for giving us a man to bequeath this kind of legacy and uh, congratulate them for his life and wish them very well in the next few days and in the future. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So for those who do not know the history of the cabinet in my office, now we know. And next, it's already coming, is Professor Obi Shitu. Members of the family of uh, Professor Grillo, Emeritus Professor Akonde, Professor Ajayi, the Provost of the College of Medicine, ably represented by the Deputy Provost, Professor Adeni, the Chief Medical Director of the University College Hospital ably represented by Dr. Taiwo Shoinka, the head of surgery, Professor Ogunlade, all the other protocols uh, observed, distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen. As a trainee and mentee of Professor Grillo, I describe him easily by four characteristics. He was paternalistic, almost like a mother hen wanting to do things for people. He was witty and humorous. Of course, a lover of heart, as represented by music, and of his ever present with him violin. As students, resident doctors in surgery, it was as if Professor Grillo had a memory enhancer for everybody's birthday. It seemed as if the first day you came, he wrote it somewhere, Looking through your CV, it was as if that was his main detour, looking through your CV, coming to the department. And you get a birthday felicitation with a memo from surgery. 
at least I got one all the years he was head of surgery, and I know all my colleagues did. It wasn't age of computer at the time of uh, cell phone. So he must have taken somebody with keen interest in his trainees and those who he was mentoring to do that. Even as an old man, Professor Grillo will bring other old men to the hospital for care. I'll get a call from Professor Grillo. He will say, Mr. Shitu, you will pop in into the clinic. Please see this man with prostatism. That's what we used to call urinary problems in the elderly people then. Subsequently, you say, Professor Shitu, I'm going to bring a man to you tomorrow. He's coming from, he's coming from. He was doing that almost to the very end. Sometimes in his uh, uh, iconic 404 station wagon, sometimes accompanying the people in their own vehicles. And you just see him, you say, please, can I get a wheelchair? He was doing that almost as if he was such a young person himself. Professor Grillo was witty and humorous. All these characteristics are well represented and penned down in his autobiography. I remember one very clearly. When Professor Grillo first arrived, when he said he first arrived in the US, and he was to live with his host to their residence. And you know, as is often the characteristic of us Africans, the host had offered him some warm clothing because he was still in his uh, Nigerian uh, clothing when they met him. And they had asked him to take the warm clothing. And Professor Grillo said, no, 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 that I can manage. And the host, he said in the book, he said the host told him that you won't manage, you will be dead by the time we arrive where we are going from cold. <laughs> so he said he had to take, he said he was glad he did take the, the clothing uh, thereafter. Ever wanting to assist you, I remember very clearly at one of the fellowship exams where I met him. And it was a question of what is this? And I wasn't sure. Rather than tell me the answer, he asked me other questions around the issue. Assisting with the answers I gave onto another one, onto another one, until we arrived at where the answer he had expected me to say before eventually came out. And he said, now you get it. I ah, and I said, yes, sir. That was the type of person this man, who was a big man, both physically and metaphorically. Of course, he's a lover of heart. Almost everybody will remember. It's as if the violin never left his sight. And I remember quite clearly on the two 
major occasions, I had had to invite him to be our guest. The one, my inaugural lecture, and the other at the wedding of my daughter. Professor Grillo came along with his violin. And outside of the hall in, uh, uh, in July, he sat outside and he was, he was playing the violin. The same thing during the wedding ceremony. He enjoyed it tremendously. When he was ill, and it was an admission uh, on the ward here at the UCH, one of the few personal effects he had along with him was his violin. And I think in between sleeping, taking his medication, he enjoyed himself tremendously uh, uh, with that. May the soul of Professor Grillo continue to dwell in the place of tranquility, harmony, and bliss. Thank you. So I call on um, Professor T. O. Alunge to also speak about Professor Grillo, former CMD UCH. Thank you very much. The family of my late teacher, mentor, and the chair of my advisory committee, not in the administrative sense, uh, but on a personal note. I almost got intimidated by the two previous uh, speakers, both of them my teacher and senior colleague. And who says that I surgeons do not have the garb? I begin by appreciating the family of our late teacher, Professor Isaac Cadetayo Grillo, the management of the University of Ibadan through the provost of the college, the management of the University College Hospital, Ibadan through the chief medical director be represented, and let me sincerely appreciate the foundation provost and also chief medical director, Emeritus Professor Olu Oliakonde, whose birthday was a few days ago, and I sincerely apologize that I didn't go to eat of what I should have had. I also would like to recognize and appreciate the one and only Jaguashu of uh, Ijebuland, my teacher, mentor, daddy, uh, Professor Jide Ajayi. Head of surgery, Professor Shegun Samuel Ogunlade, all the members of the surgery fraternity, our friends and families, ladies and gentlemen. I started my residency training in surgery on a rocky note and the intimidation by the senior resident is better imagined. Some of them are here listening to me and uh, wish now I didn't say that. But my rotation through the cardiothoracic unit brought me under the tutelage of the gentle giant of surgery, Professor Isaac Aditayo Grillo who was loved by many on account of his persuasive and gentle voice. It was easy to find solace in his comforting words 
of hello Dr. Alunge how are you today? In spite of and despite all the harassment by the senior registrars I knew that there was a comforting hand to help me along. So wading through the murky waters of residency training and one time senior registrar in cardiothoracic surgery unit, which was described by somebody as um, the Lions Club because of the fierceness of care. One of the surviving members of the Lions Club is here. Um, but I'm sure he would uh, not dispute what I'm going to say. Um, Professor Yinka Degui. You get woken up at 5 o'clock in the morning, 5 a.m., and they are by the side of the patient. And I asked him, what am I supposed to do at 5 a.m.? I was told, this is the nature of cardiothoracic surgery. So you get to work at 5 o'clock, 5.30, and then at 2 a.m. you want to go to bed. They said, no, all the patients we've operated upon in the intensive care unit must be nursed until the next day. Fortunately, Professor Digboye was the chairman of my wedding. And I looked up to him one day and I said, why did you encourage me to get married if I'm not going to see the wife I'm marrying for the next six months? And he <coughs> said, brother, this is what it takes. And so the unit was peculiar and unique. But this gentle giant was always there, Professor Grillo, to calm the frail nerves. And so being a one-time senior registrar, I was dubbed a frustrated cardiothoracic surgeon. Never mind the experiences that I garnered there became exceptionally useful when I finally found myself in the United Kingdom. Professor Grillo was among the revered consultants who managed to erase the sad memories of harassment by senior residents when we were in training. An assumption of office as a consultant in 1995, I had difficulties in aligning with the new environment and position. But with the counsel from the elders, including Professor Grillo, my integration was less rocky compared to when I started residency. Okay. Professor M. T. Shokumbi actually gave a little insight and unfortunately Dr. Bito had not arrived so he will be the flogging guy for now uh, but that's where the cookie crumbles so get used to it but it's actually a family of lovely people. The highlight of my close association with Professor Isaac Radetayo Grillo came when I was appointed the Chief Medical Director of the University College Hospital, Baden. On several occasions, he will walk to the office. And oftentimes, I'll see him on the camera. And so I stand up to usher him into my office. He's not, he wasn't fond of sitting for long. He will come in and then offer candid advice. How are you doing? How's the job? Is everything okay? And like Professor Shitu did mention, can you help me out with a gentleman that has so, so, and so, so, and so? He was always looking after other people's interest. And sometimes you meet him in the consultant common room, and with a smile on his face, he gives you a well, well, warm welcome. He helped me with a sound counsel to navigate with the tools that I had to need to navigate the eight years in office as the chief medical director. Professor Grillo was a great teacher, peace-loving, unassuming, and he only excused me from trimming his toenails at the surgical outpatient clinic when I became the chief medical director. It was my responsibility to follow him to the surgical outpatient department to trim his toenails. Every time he needed it done, he comes and says, I said, I said, 
my toenails are long, so I will follow him to SOP, trim the toenails, and I said, sir, you're not even afraid that I may cut it, and he says, don't worry, I'm sure you won't, and then he's off. But when I became the chief medical director, he excused me from that job, and I really missed that opportunity. He paid his dues as a teacher, great teacher. He paid his dues as a wonderful comforter and mentor, and has left behind fond memories of a great surgical giant, a violinist and a caring family man. The last time we had interaction was when my sister, Damilola, and I were involved in a geriatric program. And he was quite willing to come in, even though he had no physical strength, he came in a wheelchair. And I went to embrace him, and he says, how are you? And I said, I'm very fine. So I gave him an embrace, and that was the last time that we had, you know, to um, see each other. I believe that he has left behind footprints, but one thing is important. The family we take solace, that this gentle giant of surgery has done so much, and for many of us, those who were privileged to have met him, and those who are now taking the dropouts from the things that he did, will want to emulate him in his life. May his gentle soul rest in peace. Amen. Thank you, sir. Yes, Professor Adek Goye, sir. My impression was that uh, everybody has said everything that I knew about Professor uh, um, I.A. Grillo. But I think of all the people who have come here, I'm probably the person who has stayed more and longer with him in intimate practice of surgery. He taught me the skills that I have. And uh, we shared emotional moments together. My seven professor Grillo. When I heard about his death, it was a very emotional experience for me. Till any time. And uh, his just excuse me. I will want to stand on the previous protocols without wasting more time on a lot of things that many have said. I said he taught me surgery. I mean the act and the science of cardiothoracic surgery. The boldness that is required in handling blood teaching me how to handle very, very bloody situations. Aortic surgery, surgery of the lungs, surgery of the diaphragm, and so on and so forth. My starting point was with uh, foreign body in the airway. I remember adults who throw granite like that and they catch it, and it just goes straight into the right main stem bronchus. And being a vegeta vegetable, the respiratory distress that is attendant is very distressing. And uh, it showed me what to do. You read the books, the actions are not really there. He showed me how to retrieve foreign bodies from the airway. 
if you don't think it is a big deal until it happens to you, then you will know that this is one of the surest and fastest way to die. He showed me how to retreat them by the various postural techniques. And when they are impacted and will not come out, he showed me the way to get them out by using various baskets and so on, even Foley's catheter. Later on, we progressed to doing what, we, what he called bronchotomy. That is the generic name. How you will open the chest, go to the particular bronchus where the foreign body is lodged, open it, and try to get it out. And sometimes, while they are breathing for the patient, the foreign body has gone. And you have to go to the recesses to pick it. And when they wake up, breathing is as difficult as ever. Because granite is not a friend when it gets into the airway. The fat content of that food irritates a lot. After we got through that, I saw that the lung can be damaged. When we try to re remove the foreign body, we had to remove the lung because it's destroyed. It will never wake up again. So those are the various things. He taught me how to remove part of the lung that we call lobectomy. And later on, when it is protracted, the, the whole lung becomes supinated. It produces a lot of pus, and we have to remove the lung. You have to now breathe for that kind of a patient. And I tell you, it's a challenge. When you have, instead of the lung, you have the pus. And you have to keep such people alive. The next thing he taught me, apart from all those, is esophageal, that is the food passage. How we will operate on them if you have a denture impacted, stuck to the wall. You want to pull it and it tears the esophagus. And I tell you, when the esophagus is torn, most Nigerians have very, very poor nutritional level. Most of them, whether they are fat or lean, their nutritional status is very, very poor. That esophagus or food passage will not heal. We have to create another pa passage of feeding the patient well to give the nutrition. We will bypass that. Saliva is a very, very potent destroyer of tissue. So we will bypass that, put rubber everywhere, and the patient will really look pathetic. So we have various stages we have to pass through to be able to get the patient to live. After that, you know what we'll do? We are going to replace that food passage either using the stomach or the large intestine. We have to go through all those nuances to be able to have a live human being. And uh, these are the various procedures this great man taught me. So I operated with him very, very much. And he taught me all the skills. And he gave me strength to be able to cope with long hours of surgery. It became a way of life. I got used to that. And I can stand forever, which I did anyway. It's not stories. Some of my colleagues who know me all the years, they know how very much I worked and how I endured because it's supposed to be part of my training. 
after going through quite a number of that, we had various techniques we used for those surgeries. It's not a matter of operating and the patient will not do well. You don't come to ask me, is the patient doing well? The patient has to do well. That is mandatory. It's the only way we functioned. One day he said he's going to teach me how to put my finger into the heart that is beating. Well, that was the greatest challenge I've had so far. And uh, the patient had difficulty with one of the openings, one of the valves. And uh, <laughs> we call it commissurotomy, digital commissurotomy. There are equipments for this. You can go through the base of the, I mean, the apex of the heart. But he said he's going to teach me how to use my finger. The heart is beating. You will put a cycling tape that we call pulse strings somewhere between the atrial appendage and the real atrium. And you will pull it. You will cut a part of it, you put your finger, and you will put the pulse string. It will hold your finger, and then you will pull your finger into the opening of the heart. Each time blood is passing, you push your finger down. down. And when you do that, blood will, if you stay in too long, that patient will stop. The heart will stop beating. <clears throat> And nobody is going to thank you for killing their patients. So you have to know the auspicious period when you just push your finger down. He was the one who taught me. To put my posturing alone, I lose 500 meals. But you know, you are going to take all the body, the blood in this body. And you are going to waste it the way you are doing. So he taught me the appropriate time to do what? Until I knew it, he kept on bringing the cases. And then later on, I became an expert, and I could do those cases myself. You see, I can go on and on. What assisted me was his patience. His kindness in the operation, he will put his hand on my shoulder. And that is assuring enough. And that kept me going. Later, when I met with the younger colleagues who gave me, you know, fire, they didn't help me. They only got me to become resistant and difficult. So whatever they say, I would not budge. I would just do it my way. And that was the way I grew over time. And by the grace of God, I enjoyed working with Professor I.A., Grillo, the gentleman whose gentleness, I would say, made me capable. I don't like saying may his soul rest in peace. The peace will have come when he passed on. He's in the repose of the Lord, and the Lord is the judge of the quick and the dead. Thank you very much, everybody, for just hearing a little of what this great person did in my life. Permit me to stop here. Thank you. So, is the Dr. Brito, Professor Sheikh, could we talk about earlier on? The young shall lead you to the appropriate place when you are old. Thank you, Dr. Brito. Hello, sir. Next, I will call on Professor Eli Okeke to give his tributes. Then Eric should get ready after that. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody, and uh, I wish to stand on the existing protocols. I'm sorry if you didn't see my name on the program. It was written with uh, in invisible ink. <laughs> 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 uh, 
I was uh, Professor Grillo's senior registrar in 1986. So he usually called me to his office from time to time to give me instructions or to find out what has transpired with some of the patients. But this particular day was different. He had looked through my uh, assessments by his two other colleagues, Professor Sadebo and uh, Oshinawa. And he called me and asked me what happened. Um, so I told him that when I joined the unit, residence rounds were starting at 5 a.m. And that by the time we finished the round, about 8, 8.30, the patients will then be awake. And they'll be calling us back to come and to tell us what their problems were. When you woke them up at five, they would say, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm all right. Because you were still sleeping. So at about 8.30, they will call you back to tell you how they felt. So I explained to him that that was why I decided as no registrar to be starting my own rounds at eight. And each time the other two consultants asked me or instructed me, you must start at five. I never said no, I'll say yes, sir. But I usually started again at eight. So when it was time to score me, I'm sure they wished there was something poorer than poor in the in the forms that they were filling. So Professor Grillo saw this and uh, he said, well, I sh that he wants to score me too. So they brought uh, a set of forms for him and he scored me excellent, excellent, excellent. And usually after your score, you're supposed to make your comments. For those other two consultants, I had also, I had said I agree with their comments. So when he scored me, excellent, excellent, I also said, I agree with your comments. <laughs> I couldn't argue with anybody. So I wrote, I agree with your comments, and I gave him back. Then he called me back. He looked me in the eye for what looked like a longest period of time and said, you're going to be the first Igbo head of the department here. And I said, thank you, sir. And eventually, I stayed and became professor and became a head of department. And <laughs> we exchanged uh, uh, recalls of that moment when I became the head, when he came to the office. The things Professor Shitu said about, and other people have said about uh, Professor Grillo and his uh, violin, he actually attended my daughter's wedding, too, with his violin. Yes, and he sat at the back of the church and he played. It was a wonderful thing working with him. And uh, throughout my headship, he always came in to find out what everything was going well. And he always gave us present uh, at the end of year, drinks and all that. Even when it was difficult for him, he would come in a wheelchair just to say, how are you? So I join uh, all those who have spoken uh, in thanking God for his life and uh, thanking his family for giving him birth and uh, praying that his soul will continue to rest in peace. Thank you very much. So, thank you, sir. Eric, you're going to give us some interesting piece in poetry. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. It's such an honor to be gathered here this evening to, to be amongst um, people that my father had spent quite a lot of his years with. Um, 
I do remember growing up, coming to the office and seeing so many of you that are seated here. And um, I try my best to remember the names. And I think I did a good job earlier in the day when I introduced myself. Um, apart from the law for medicine, which Professor Grillo had, and um, it was an undying love. It was like a second nature. You would. He would want you to study medicine, even though even if you are an art student, he will tell you you can study medicine. Um, I was fortunate to be with him 10 days before he passed away, and um, in one of the conversations, he was eating, and he said, what part of the body is the meat that he was eating? And I said it was the liver, and he said, no, I should look at the characteristics, and he went on to describe each of the characteristics, and we ended up concluding that it was the spin that he was eating. That was him. Every, every moment with him was a teachable moment. So apart from the love for medicine, he also loved art and uh, music with the violin that everybody had said. But there was something peculiar about him that many people do not know. And um, you would see him with a pen every time, and you would see him with a note. And you think it's just to mark or to say, to, to jot down some things. But what he was doing was, he was writing poems. Um, he has over 200 poems. The conversation towards his 90th birthday was to turn all of them into a book, but COVID-19 happened and it didn't come true. In March this year, we still had that conversation, and um, by the grace of God, we would compile them together for him at some point in time. However, as I was going through the file, which I would tread dearly to my heart now, I came across two poems that was written in 1978 and 1975, and I think I should share it with everybody. The first one was written during Surgical Grand Rounds, April 5, 1975, and it's titled Surgical Radiocodences in Chest Radiographs. And I read thus, chest radio, chest radio lucencies, shadows dark that is, they sometimes cause confusion to the unintimidated, uninitiated neophyte. You look at a normal chest, the apex seems so dark, and sometimes without experience, you call it a pneumothorax, freshman's pneumothorax. And suddenly there is pain in the adult chest without trauma. The patient coughs and sweats, running straight to casualty. You examine and you percuse. You listen and the sound is far. You x-ray and you find a void where the TB bled has ruptured. TB pneumothorax, that is. Or from chronic fistic patients or red sniper, you look and look and look. A histro an histrological or microbiological clue is needed. Or sometimes with much confusion, there is a linear basal atelectasis with darkness in a stripe of radiolucency. Beware, it is not nemoperitoneum. And what of unilateral darkness in the coughing non fistixic patient? Bronchograms and arteriograms may yield the macular symptoms. Shadows, light, and dark the constant daily battle from graduating to retirement, you would, ever, you would ever fight the shadows. That was written in 1975. I'm sure, so he would write and then type with the ancient typewriter, which he also had. And then in 1978, June 16, at two o'clock, between examination sessions, he penned down where have all doctors gone? And I read thus. Where have all the doctors gone? Gone to sick house. Everyone sick. Why don't they, why don't they reason up? Sickness lingers all around. Whether the doctors live or die. Where have all the sick ones gone? Gone to the morticians, everyone. Oh, why don't they wisen up? Mortuaries are open all along. Where the such ones live or die? Where have all the morticians gone? 
gone to college, everyone. Oh, why don't they wizen up? Colleges are open all along, whether morticians live or die. Where have all the college, college, collegiates gone? Gone to varsities, everyone. Oh, why don't they wizen up? Varsities are open all along, whether collegiates live or die. Where have all the graduates gone? Gone to medical school, everyone. Oh, why don't they wizen up? Medical schools are open all along, whether graduates live or die. Where have all the medical schools gone? Gone to doctors, everyone. Oh, why don't they wizen up? Doctors don't live forever, you know, whether the medical schools live or die. Where have all the doctors gone? Gone to the graveyard, everyone. Oh, why don't they wizen up? Graveyards are open all along, whether the doctors live or die. Thank you. So we thank you very much, Eric. I'm sure between Professor Adeboye and Eric, we have done some continuous medical education in thoracic and cardiovascular surgery, uh, which I really enjoy. And uh, the department will give us CME points um, at the end of the day. So we're going to have the musical interlude, the second one. But before then, our Dean of Faculty of Clinical Sciences walked in as Eric was reading those poems. Mr. Dean, you are welcome, sir. So, Dayo, thank you. We cannot but have an online contribution to this program. Um, so, Dr. Badino, an alumni of the Ibadan College of Medicine, University of Ibadan, 1970 said, want to give his tributes online. So I call on the, the technical department to do so for us. Dr. Badino, sir. Thank you very much. I hope everybody hears me there. I stand on existing protocol and I feel privileged to be part of this occasion. Um, my name is Venerable Emeritus Dr. Kunle Obadino of the 1970 graduating class. Professor Grillo was my teacher in the medical school. And between 1972 and 1973, I was registrar under Professor Ajayi in um, East Van in surgery. But on weekends, I used to accompany Dr. Grillo to Bomosho to cover the surgery, the surgical uh, problems for the weekends. However, a lot has been said about Professor Grillo 
of UI usage. But what is not known to many people is the outstanding legacy of diligence, knowledge, and credibility of Professor Grillo, which Dr. Grillo planted for future Nigerians at Omaji Phillips Hospital in St. Louis, Missouri, USA. He was the first Nigerian to do his residency program in that hospital. That was in the mid, in the mid 1960s. Before he went for his fellowship in thoracic cardiothoracic surgery, between 1970 and 1979, before the hospital was closed down, almost 20 of us Nigerian surgeons rode on the back of Professor Grillo to get into the residency program of that hospital without any formal interview. All we needed was a documentation that we knew Professor Grillo. I got into that hospital on, um, uh, on our way to when, uh, on our way to Bomo Shore in 1973, and he asked me what I was, what, what was my plan. I told him I'm part CFMG and I'm looking for a place in America. And I was spoken to Professor Ajayi, and who advised me from there. And then he said, "What? Why? Why am I looking for a position?" that he will introduce me to Omaji Felix. And between five years, between one week or so, I got a form from Omaji Felix Hospital. And that was the admission. In that, at that time, it was almost circus and all uh, surgical program must start on July 1 in the United States. But if you come from in that hospital, Maggie Phillips, if you are from Nigeria and you mention Professor Grillo, you can enter in September, you can enter in, 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 in October, you can enter in January. He was so respected there that he really facilitated the training of many of us. On two occasions, while I was there, he will make sure he visited us to encourage us and to impress upon us the need to return to Nigeria as soon as we finish our program. Professor Lajide Ajayi will also make sure he will meet all of us at the American College of Surgeons meeting. And the only message he had for Professor Ajayi had for us then and Professor Bilbo was that we must make sure we finish our program and come back to Nigeria. When I entered the program in 1973, Dr. Ayo Primo was my chief president. And with Dr. Ayo Primo, Dr. Bayo Apuakbe, who was also a, an old student in 1968, said Professor Sonia Deyemi Doro, late of the 1969 said Dr. Ladiron, 1974, said Dr. Donio Panuga, 74, said Dr. Ipuno, Dr. Jimmy Dr. Nathaniel, Dr. Ipuno, Dr. Nathaniel, Dr. Nathaniel, Dr. Nathaniel, Dr. Nathaniel, Dr. Nathaniel, Dr. 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 Nathaniel, Dr. Nathaniel, Dr. 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 Nathaniel, Dr. 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 His name in, in Nomadi Phillips Hospital is like putting a password to enter your account or to enter your, your computer. Once you go there and you say, I from the you are you are in. So he, he, all I want to say that we are all grateful unto him and we say that he's so we rest in peace and let perpetual light shine upon him. Thank you very much. And God bless you all. Thank you, sir, Dr. Badino. Um, so what a good name he had, or he still has, that buys position for Nigerians in far away America for their residency program. His kindness 
continue to shine. And we thank God for his life. So Dayo will give us another musical interlude before we get to the next phase. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, I need to mention that when Dr. Badinan was given his um, tribute, a recording name is uh, one of our great teachers, he's also in our midst, Professor Ajayi. Thank you very much for what you have done for the University of Ibadan and, Professor, and the University College Hospital, sir. What we do will always be remembered by our students. We want to give opportunity for one or two comments from friends and fellows, professional colleagues, if there's any. Yeah, Mr. O, O, Yetunde FRCS, want to speak? Let's go. Thank you very much, Dr. Falabe. All protocols observed. I'm Olika Ode Yutunde, a surgeon who trained in this hospital under the tutelage of Professor Grillo, even though I didn't turn out to be a cardiothoracic surgeon. But he was the HOD at the time I got the residency training program in 1986. Actually, the interview was held in December 1985. It was the HOD. I can't remember whether he attended the interview then, but I could remember Professor Oshutoku, the late Oshutoku, the CMD, gave me, asked me some tough questions. I was working with the Ohio State government then as a fresh NYSC graduate, well, not so fresh, and I wanted to do some cutting before coming for residency. I wanted to perfect my appendicectomies. I wanted to do a lot of breast lumps excision. I wanted to close a prostatectomy wound, even though I couldn't do the prostatectomy myself. So I felt I wasn't ready, even though I had passed the primaries, even though it was not required then to pass primaries. You could pass it once to get it. So I had an interview in December 1985, and I was taken. 
So I took my time. I didn't know that there was a time limit to when I could uh, report. And that the appointment would lapse after three months. So I took my time. I was. So this, this lacking thing, why I had to talk today, was Professor Gillian as the HOD. Of course, he was my teacher. He knew me. I was a bit troublesome as a student in his set. So he knew me. So he sent one of the SRs to me. Please tell your brother that if he did not report within three months, he would lose the appointment. I was so thrilled. I had to do everything. I had not even given notice to my employers that I was leaving. But I had to do things and I had to rush. I missed the deadline by a few days. But thanks to Professor Grillo, somebody else will have said, okay, let's pick somebody else. But he said, no, I saw you at the interview. You are taken. I approve your appointment. And you should be there. So that touched me. That was some 36 years ago when I started my residency program. Of course, a lot of things that happened then. A lot of water had passed under the bridge. It took me like a son when I came in. Even after I told me I wasn't going to specialize in cardiothoracic surgery, it didn't matter to him. When it mattered, he would apply the carrot to me. When it mattered, he would apply the stick to me at grand rounds, at mortality meetings, at radiological meetings. And I really enjoyed it with all his other colleagues, of course, Professor Adebo Nojo, uh, Dr. Shinawa, Mr. Shinawa at that time, and of course the late Professor Adebo, um, Dr. Brimo, who came later. We had a good time. Like Professor Kiki said, World Rounds started at 6 a.m. We had a running battle then. But Professor Adeboye was my SR. It was Dr. Adeboye then. And he would tell you, you are, we didn't see you at the World Round. Don't do that again. And I enjoyed it. Later on, I felt that should be OK. So Professor Grillo, this is the second time I will be here within seven months. I came here in December to pay tribute to Professor Jao, who was also one of my great mentors in this department. Um, Sad, though not so sad, to come again, but I want to cherish his memory, his candor, his, 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 his push, and all the things he did for some of us who were young enough to be his sons, even though we were his professional sons. We didn't bear the name Grillo. I was talking to his son outside there. I said, you are a carbon copy of your father. I never met him before. So I pray, I hope, I cherish, I desire that all the good works he left, he did, he left behind will not go to waste. And that as long as the Lord liveth, we know he will rest in the bosom of the Lord. And we, his professional sons and children, will continue to remember him in good stead. Thank you very much. So before the last... Uh, Musical interlude. Um, um, somebody else should do the vote of thanks, but uh, we thank uh, the family and everybody who have been here, contributed to this program, and make, made it a success that it has been. My only little line is that uh, when we wrote our final exam in surgery, Professor Grillo was our head of department then. And um, our class will forever be grateful to him for leading the department and for producing many other surgeons from our class, both locally and international. So, musical interlude, then after that, Dr. Adewola will just come on. I won't have to call him again. Musical interlude.
Good evening, everybody. I would like to stand on existing protocols. On behalf of the College of Medicine, University of Ibadan, and by extension, the whole University of Ibadan, and the Department of Surgery, in College of Medicine, University of Ibadan, and University College Hospital, we want to thank God for the opportunity to celebrate the life of a surgical colossus. From all that has gone on here today, we can see that it's a well-lived life. And it has brought up lessons for future generations. So we thank God for that. I want to thank the family for making out time to attend this event. It's been several years that Professor Grillo had left the active service of the university and the hospital. But you found time to come to attend a program where he lived most of his life and where he impacted lives. I want to thank you for giving him to mankind and to society. You allowed him to give all that he has been able to give, all that people have been saying. The fact that people have described him as kind, as supportive, and other attributes that have been given showed that you really supported him and you allowed him to impart lives. You have not been selfish to keep him always at home. We thank you so much for what you've done. We thank you for the opportunity to be here. We thank you for releasing him to society. I want to thank all our medical elders that are here. Emeritus Professor Luwale Akonde, we thank you so much. You are always ever supportive to programs that involve the College of Medicine and all aspects of the College of Medicine. I wish to recognize specially and thank the Jaguar Sophie Debuland, Professor GD Ajayi. Every time I see you, I remember the gold, the GD Ajayi gold medal of the West African College of Surgeons. In spite of all that we can consider as odds, you also made time out to be here today. We thank you so much. I've been trying to look around. I'm sorry if I miss any of the other medical elders, but we thank every medical elder that has been here today. We thank you for all members of the ICOMA who have been able to find time to be here. I also want to thank people who joined virtually. And I want to thank members of the Department of Surgery for organizing this event and also for members that have been able to attend. Even though um, Professor Shokumbi said they are not so elderly, uh, but, but we recognize also that they, 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 are not, they were not born yesterday into the surgical family. So we thank you so much for helping the upcoming generation to recognize the importance of celebrating a life. What everybody that has come here to give tributes have done today is that you have inspired lives. And whether you recognize it or not, you have also impacted lives. There are people who are going to go away today and their lives will be redefined. And they are going to say, okay, I'm also going to do more or attempt to do more than even the, our departed father and grandfather of, of Saudi have done. So we thank you so much for all those who have spoken. We thank everybody that has come, the IT team, members of the press, and everybody. I pray that God will bless every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for all your graces in the life of your servant, Adetayo, when he was with us. We thank you for the degree of union with you, in you, by you, and for you, that he experienced on this side of eternity. We pray for the family and all of us who are concerned. In your love, help us to find faith and hope. In your light, grant us divine wisdom. In your might, uphold and bless us for your greater glory, the blessing of all your creation, and the multiplication of your fruit in all our lives, through Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. So with that closing prayer, we have come to the end of today's program. Thank you very much. Dani 